and cold. I notice that whenever it is summer, people complain about the heat. But whenever it is winter, people complain about the cold. It seems that people are never satisfied. I don't like the winter. It is usually much too cold for me. My teeth chatter and my fingers turn numb whenever the weather gets cold. It is hard for me to warm up once I start to freeze. I try to wear layers of clothes, but winter winds go through my clothes no matter how much I wear. My feet feel like they are blocks of ice on a cold January day when I walk home from school. I would not like to live in a place that had cold climate all year long. I am not comfortable when it is too cold. I like the summer. Some people say that it is hot and sticky in the summer, but I don't mind the heat at all. I love to feel the warm sunshine on my skin. I like the freedom of not having to wear heavy coats and boots. I am the happiest when there is a slightly cool breeze that comes along to refresh you on a hot summer day. I could live in a place with a hot climate. I would enjoy that. Of course, when you are in a place with a hot climate, there are more bugs than in places with cooler climates. I don't care for bugs. Where I live, it is very humid. The heat and moisture combine to make it uncomfortable sometimes. It is nicer when the heat is high, but the humidity is low. It would be better if I lived somewhere where it was hot, but not humid. That would be just perfect. Divorce. Mary's parents just got a divorce. Mary is very upset. She thinks that her parents don't love her anymore. She thinks that they got a divorce because of her. She is wrong. Her parents love her just as much as they always did. They aren't getting divorced because of Mary. Sometimes marriages just don't work out. It isn't really anyone's fault. Marriage isn't easy. It is hard for two people to stay together for a lifetime. Sometimes people change as they get older and they move on. Some people have perfectly good marriages and they stay together for their entire lives. Divorce doesn't happen because the parents don't love the children anymore. A lot of children feel that it is their fault, but it isn't their fault at all. Children neither cause the divorce nor can they prevent it. It is up to the parents. Divorce isn't the end of the world. Children can still see both parents and stay with them. Life goes on. Sometimes children can get new stepmothers or stepfathers. That can be a good thing. You just have to be understanding and know that your parents still love you. Life doesn't always go the way that we planned it, but it has its twists and turns. Life is an adventure. If your parents get a divorce, just be understanding. Know that they love you and that this is a hard time for them. It is a hard time for you too, but these things have a way of working themselves out in the end. The trunk in the attic. Last month, my grandmother asked me if I could help her to clean out her attic. I was happy that she asked me. My grandmother says that her attic is full of junk. I think that her attic is full of treasures. I helped her to dust and vacuum the attic. I pulled and pushed around boxes and crates. I helped her to wash the floors and walls. My favorite thing that I did was to sort through the old trunk that she had up there. The trunk had a rusty latch on it. It was a bit difficult to open, but my grandmother got a knife and pried the latch open. The trunk was full of all kinds of things. There were lots of clothes. Some of the clothes had been my grandmother's. There was a blue velvet dress that she had worn to a dance when she and my grandfather were dating. It was a beautiful dress, but there were a few moth holes in it. There were some of my mother's old clothes. There was a pair of bell-bottom slacks that had bright flowers on it. I couldn't believe that my mother had ever worn something like that. There were some of my mother's old report cards. Some of her marks weren't very good. I had fun reading the report cards. There were photographs. There was a picture of my grandparents holding my mother when she was a baby. There was an old baseball glove that one of my uncles had owned. 
There was even one of my old dolls in there. One of her legs was missing. My grandmother said that I was rough on my dolls when I was little. I should have taken better care of my toys. There was even some old jewelry. I tried on some of the old clothes and jewelry. I told my grandmother that I liked looking through old things. My grandmother told me to keep whatever I wanted. She said that it was all junk. I still say that her trunk was full of treasures. What I like most and least about myself. I was trying to think up the best and the worst things about myself. I think the best thing about me is that I am very friendly. I have a lot of friends, and they all like me. I try to be good to my friends. I don't often have arguments with people. I think that I am quite easy to get along with. The worst thing about me is that I sometimes feel sad. Sometimes I don't feel sad for any particular reason. I just get into moods where I am depressed. Sometimes there is a reason to be sad. I was sad when my pet frog died. I was sad when I lost my favorite baseball card. On those days, I'm still nice to my friends, but inside I feel like there is a heavy weight in my chest. I think that everyone feels sadness sometimes. I try to do things that make me happy whenever I get into one of my sad moods. Last Saturday, I felt a bit sad, so I called up my friend John and asked him if he wanted to go to the movies. We went to a comedy. We laughed all the way through the movie, so that by the time the movie was over, I didn't feel sad anymore. My friendliness is my best trait, and my sad moods are my worst traits. I have to work at getting over my sad moods more quickly. Being sad doesn't do anyone any good. There is no use in feeling sorry for oneself. If I could go back in my life, if I could go back in my life and do some things differently, this is what I would do. I would not waste so many hours in front of the television set. I would get out and enjoy my life rather than watching actors in shows. I would be a little more considerate of other people. I would realize that my mother has more to do than pick up after me. I would pay more attention in school. Tests are easier when you have paid attention rather than fooling around in class. I would save more money rather than spend it on useless things. I would read more. Reading is enjoyable and it opens the doors into all kinds of wonderful places, both real and imagined. I would learn to play an instrument. Music is always appreciated if it is played well. I would eat better foods. I would try to stay healthy through my diet and exercise. I would take more pictures and I would keep a journal. Memories are very precious. I would take the time to listen to what people have to say. People appreciate a good listener. I would take the time to enjoy each day as it comes. Sometimes I am so busy looking forward to what is coming up that I don't take the time to enjoy the day that I am living in. That's what I would do if I could go back in my life. In fact, I think I'll just make a habit of doing all of those things all through my life. Walk a mile in my shoes. Have you ever heard the saying, walk a mile in my shoes? I think it's a very good saying. Do you know what it means? It means that before you judge someone, you should put yourself in his or her position. For example, if someone was running in a race and they did very poorly and came in last, it wouldn't be fair to say, oh, he's just a terrible runner you would have to look at all the circumstances that made the person lose the race. Maybe they pulled a muscle in their leg the day before. Maybe this is their very first race. Maybe they are not in good form because something isn't right in their lives. There can be so many things that affect a person's life, performance, and moods. There can be so many things that affect a person's life, performance, and moods. If someone was very quiet at a party, you couldn't just assume that they weren't friendly. You don't know what is happening in their lives. They could be feeling ill, or they might have just had a bad experience. Nobody can know exactly how another person feels. 
even if someone tells you what he or she is experiencing, you still won't fully understand what is going on inside the other person. Everyone perceives and feels things differently. To walk a mile in someone else's shoes is to try and understand things from that person's perspective. We are all shaped by the events that have taken place in our lives. No two people have gone through the exact same things. So, before you are quick to judge someone, stop and think about what it is that they might have gone through. You won't always understand why people do what they do, but you can try to understand and put yourself in their position. Joking. Joking is good. Jokes can be very funny. Jokes can also be hurtful. Jokes can be tasteless, too. It is not an easy thing to find jokes that do not offend anyone. Some jokes make fun of different races. Those jokes are not funny. They are hurtful. It is not right to tell racist jokes. Many jokes use bad language or are about questionable subject matter. These jokes are also not acceptable. Many people are highly offended by rude jokes. What some people find funny, others will not. Comedy is a very personal thing. Some people like slapstick comedy. That is the kind of comedy that the Three Stooges use. Some people like very subtle humor. Some people will laugh at just about anything. Sometimes it is not appropriate to laugh, but you feel like laughing anyway. Did you ever see anyone fall down? Did you feel like laughing when they fell down? You were probably worried that they had hurt themselves. Yet the way that they fell was so funny that you felt like laughing. It's not funny when someone falls, but you can't help but laugh even though you try to hide it. Jokes and comedy differ from culture to culture. Many people from other countries come here and don't understand our comedy. Jokes and comedies are often geared toward our environment. Sometimes comedians make fun of the things that we do in our day-to-day -day lives like going to the bank or going grocery shopping. We can all relate to that. Being a comedian is not an easy job. Telling jokes and making people laugh is extremely difficult. Jokes are fun, and they are funny if they are good. Jokes can get you into a lot of trouble if they are inappropriate, and sometimes they're just not funny and nobody laughs. Here's a joke. Why does the cow wear a bell? because its horns don't work. Do you get it? Do you think it is funny? Well, maybe it's not that funny. I told you that it was difficult being a comedian. Drugs. There are two different types of drugs. There are legal drugs and there are illegal drugs. Legal drugs are the type of drugs that the doctor gives you when you are sick. Illegal drugs are the drugs that people sell on the street. Illegal drugs are very dangerous. If someone ever wants you to try any type of substance that you are not sure about, you should always say no. People who sell drugs on the street are criminals. If they get caught, they will be sent to jail. They sell drugs to get money. They don't care that people's lives are ruined from taking drugs. If you take illegal drugs, you can become addicted to them. That means that you just have to have the drug no matter what. Some people steal from other people to get money to buy drugs. Drugs affect your mind. If you take drugs, you will not be able to think clearly. Your marks in school will drop. Your memory won't be very good. Your personality won't be the same. It is very unfortunate that some people do try drugs. They think that it won't hurt them. They are wrong. If you are smart, you will stay away from all drugs, except for the ones that the doctor gives you. Drugs are just bad news. If you know someone who is thinking about trying drugs, tell them that their entire life could be ruined. In America, they have a saying, just say no to drugs. It is a good saying, but I think I would rather say, I'm just too smart to take drugs. If my fish could talk. I have a goldfish. 
He swims around in his bowl all day. He looks bored. I look inside the bowl and watch him. His mouth always moves. He looks like he is talking. I imagine what my goldfish would say if he really could talk. I think he would say, "Hey, I'm bored in this little bowl. Why don't you get me a bigger tank with more fish in it? I would like to have some friends to swim around with." I went out and bought a bigger tank for my goldfish. I put some plants at the bottom of the tank, and I got a miniature deep sea diver to put at the bottom of the tank. I looked into the tank and imagined what my goldfish was saying. He seemed to be saying, "This is a nice tank. It's roomy in here, and you decorated it well. But I still don't have any friends to swim with." I went to the pet store and bought three more goldfish. I put them into the tank. All of the goldfish seemed to look at each other. They swam near each other and seemed to be playing games. I knew which one was my goldfish because he has a black spot on his fin. I looked at him and imagined that he was talking again. He said, "This is great. I have a big new home and friends to swim with. These are nice goldfish that you brought home for me. Thank you." Goldfish can't really talk. I know that. I just like to pretend that my goldfish talks. He seems very happy now with his nice new home and his new friends. I don't think goldfish can smile either, but it looks like my goldfish has a smile on his face. The best teacher. I have had a lot of teachers. Some of them were good, and some of them were boring. There is one teacher whom I remember very well. He is the best teacher that I ever had. His name was Mr. Alden. He was a history teacher. History is not my favorite subject. I don't really enjoy history a lot. When I was in Mr. Alden's class, he made history seem exciting. He was more of an actor than a teacher. If he was describing a war, he would make us feel all the emotions that the soldiers and their families would have felt. We could almost hear the guns firing and the people shouting. He would paint a picture in our minds that was very vivid. When I had a history test in his class, I didn't have to study much. I would remember every word that he had said. I would see him doing the actions that went along with his stories. He was very animated. He would shout out orders as if he was a general, or he would speak softly and reverently when describing the death of a great hero. The most important thing that I learned from Mr. Alban was that I did really like history. I just thought that I didn't like it because most people had made it dull by just reading from the textbooks. History is not just a series of dates and dull facts. History is what really happened. History is real life. All the historical figures had real families and emotions. They weren't just fictional people. After I took history from Mr. Alban, I realized that I really did have an interest in it. He was my favorite teacher, and I will always be grateful to him for making me aware of just how interesting history really is. Weather. Sometimes I watch the weathermen on television. It is fascinating to watch him point to different areas of the country on the map. He tells us where the weather will be nice and where it will be bad. The weatherman is not always right. Weather reporting is not an exact science. Nothing is very exact when it comes to the weather. The weather department does a lot of research, but they can never be sure of exactly what will happen. Sometimes it looks like it will be clear, but the wind changes direction and clouds move in. The weatherman can warn people if there is a chance of a hurricane or a tornado. The weatherman can also warn people of floods. Sometimes entire towns have to be evacuated because of bad weather. It is important to be aware of the weather. For example, it is not good to be caught in the middle of a field when there is going to be a thunderstorm. You might want to take extra precautions if there is going to be a heavy snowstorm. You would need to be in a secure place if a hurricane or tornado was predicted. You might want to cancel a picnic if you knew that it would rain that day. The weather affects us in so many ways. Some people are really affected by dull, cloudy days. If there are no sunny days, they become very depressed. Heavy air pressure can cause some people to have headaches. 
weather affects all of us in one way or another. It is always a topic of conversation. People often say things like, "Hello, it's a beautiful day today." Often we plan our lives and activities around the weather. So, if you are planning on walking home tonight, keep an eye on the sky. Are those rain clouds up there? You might need an umbrella. How to avoid catching a cold? How many colds do you catch in a year? Most of my friends catch quite a few colds. They cough, sniffle, and sneeze. They carry around tissues and blow their noses all the time. Their eyes water, and they have scratchy throats. I don't get many colds. In fact, I can go for a whole year and never catch a cold. This is why I consider myself an expert on how not to catch a cold. I'll tell you how to avoid catching a cold. I think that you need to take a lot of vitamin C. I eat a lot of fruits and vegetables. I drink fruit juice too. I also take vitamin C pills. Whenever I begin to feel a cold coming on, I make sure that I have taken my vitamin C pill and I drink a lot of orange juice. That usually knocks the cold right out of my system. I make sure that I get a lot of fresh air. In the winter, a lot of buildings are shut up tight so that the air is stale and people's germs circulate through the buildings. I get outside and breathe in fresh, clean air. If somebody is rude enough to cough or sneeze right in front of me without covering his or her mouth, I just hold my breath for a second. I'm not sure if this works or not, but I don't want to breathe in anybody's cold germs. Many germs are passed through hands. It is important to wash your hands thoroughly if you touch anything in a public place. If I hold a banister while I'm walking down the stairs, I think of all the people who have used that banister, and I make sure that I wash my hands before I eat. Doorknobs also have a lot of germs on them. Money is another thing that is passed from hand to hand and is covered with germs. Sometimes I see people stick money into their mouths. Just think of all the germs that you would be putting into your mouth if you did that. If you just give it a little bit of thought, you can avoid a lot of germs that cause colds. If you eat good food and stay fit, your body will be able to fight off the germs that causes colds and other diseases. It is not always possible to avoid colds, but if you do catch a cold, drink plenty of fluids and get a lot of rest. The future. I sometimes wonder what life will be like in the future. Life has changed so much in just the past few years. I'm sure that there are still big changes that are coming. Do you think we'll still drive cars? Maybe we'll get into computerized vehicles that we won't have to drive. We'll just push a few buttons, and the vehicles will take us to wherever we have to go. Maybe there won't be roads. We might just fly through space to get where we want to go. Instead of telephones, we'll just use our computers. We'll be able to see each other when we talk. That type of thing is already happening. Maybe we won't have to cook our meals. We might be able to push buttons to order whatever we want. A nice roast beef dinner or an ice cream sundae might just pop out of a machine. It would be nice to have a robot to clean the house for you. In the past few years, computers have been extremely important. People used to write to each other through the mail. Now people communicate so much more frequently through email. Most of my friends own computers. If we had all of these things to do the work for us, what would we do? We would still need people to program the computers. We could spend more time being creative rather than doing everyday chores. The future holds many surprises. I'm sure that technology will become even more and more amazing. When my parents were young, they had never even seen a color television. Nobody owned a computer. It doesn't take long for things to change a lot. Who knows what amazing things are in store for us? Giving a speech. I had to give a speech last week. I gave a speech to three hundred people. I had to speak in front of a group of students. I had to tell them about a campaign that we were having to raise money for cancer research. Giving a speech can be a difficult thing. When you stand in front of a big crowd, you can get very nervous. Some people feel like they have weak knees. Their legs feel as if they are made of rubber. Their heart beats very hard inside of their chest. Their palms get sweaty. Some people even become short of breath. For some people, giving a speech is their worst fear. When you give a speech, everyone is looking at you. They are waiting to hear what you have to say. When you have 300 people looking at you, you have 600 eyes that are on you. 
It is a little frightening when you think of it that way. Before I give a speech, I take three big breaths. I calm myself and I remind myself that what I have to say is important. I like to be sure of what I am going to say, so I practice my speech in front of a mirror at home. I like to look like I am relaxed and friendly. They say that practice makes perfect. So the more speeches that you give, the better you will become at it. Whenever I have to give a speech, I imagine that the audience is just one big person. I look out into the audience until I find a friendly, smiling face. I focus on that person and I pretend that I am just talking to them. I have become used to giving speeches. I am more relaxed now than I used to be. People tell me that I do not look nervous at all. I like to hear that. Sometimes I do feel a little flutter of nervousness, but I just ignore it and do the best that I can. Giving a speech is not as scary as it appears to be. Anyone can do it with a little practice. Moving to another country. My friend Steve moved to another country. He had lived in Canada all his life, and he moved to Japan. Life in Japan was very different for Steve than what he was used to. At first, Steve suffered from culture shock. His whole life seemed different. He was not used to the way of life in Japan. Steve was not used to the large crowds of people that walked up and down the streets in Japan. In his hometown in Canada, the streets were fairly quiet. Steve had to get used to the food. In Japan, the people eat a lot of fish. Steve had never eaten much fish before. Steve wanted pizza, but it was expensive in Japan. Steve said that he had to adjust his eating habits. The people in Japan have different customs than we do here in Canada. Steve didn't want to offend anyone, so he had to learn the customs. He had to learn about what Japanese people considered polite and rude. Sometimes, in a foreign country, you can do something to insult someone without even realizing that you are being rude. At first, Steve had trouble with the language. He said that the only way to really learn the language is to talk to people. Steve talked to a lot of people. He made a lot of mistakes, but people were patient with him, and they tried to help him with his Japanese. It wasn't long before Steve felt more comfortable in his new surroundings. You have to be willing to learn new customs and a new language if you move to another country. Steve feels very comfortable in Japan and in Canada now. He is thinking about going to another country now. He thinks that he might like to try and live in Italy. I'm sure that he would get over his culture shock very fast if he moved there. Moving to a new country can be difficult, but if you are willing to learn, it can be a very rewarding experience. Look for the beauty. I have learned that things don't always go the way that they were planned. If something doesn't happen the way that I want it to, I try to make the best of the situation. I always try to find something good in everything that happens. Last year, I broke my ankle when I was walking on an icy sidewalk. At first, I was very upset. I was missing school, and there was a party that I wanted to go to. I couldn't do very much of anything. My ankle was very sore. I stayed home and I read a book. It was an excellent book and one that I probably would not have had time to read under normal circumstances. My friends brought my homework to my house and we had some really nice visits while they were here. I had to accept the fact that I couldn't go anywhere on my broken ankle, so I made the best of a bad situation. Once I lost my way when I was out camping. I ended up in a very large field. I was afraid that nobody would find me, but I calmed myself down and took time to examine all the interesting wild flowers in the field. My family did find me. They were surprised at how calm I was. I have learned that there is something valuable inside every adventure and something beautiful inside every person. We had a new boy who came into our class. His clothes weren't in style, and he was not particularly handsome. Some of the boys and girls made fun of him. Sometimes people can be really cruel. He seemed to handle it all right, but inside, I knew that it must hurt. Some of my friends and I invited him out with us. We found out that he had a terrific sense of humor, and he is probably one of the nicest people that I have ever met. He has since become one of my best friends. It makes me ashamed when someone that I know judges someone by how they look. It isn't fair to do that. You'll find that something good comes out of almost every situation. 
You'll find something good about almost everyone that you meet if you look hard enough. If something doesn't work out the way you planned it, just make the best of the situation. Look for the beauty in everything. My doll. When I was an infant, I got a rag doll. It was a very plain little doll, and it wore a clown outfit and a clown's hat. I used to take that doll to bed with me every night. I couldn't go to bed without my doll. My mother used to pretend that the doll was talking to me. She would make the doll dance and sing songs. I would talk to the doll. My mother would answer for the doll, but I was a baby, and I thought that the doll was actually talking to me. That doll was my best friend. I took her everywhere. One time, I took her to a store with me, and I left her on a shelf in the store. We were halfway home when I realized that I didn't have my doll with me. I was very upset. My mother and I rushed back to the store. My doll was still there. I was so relieved. I hugged my doll and I promised myself that I would never leave her anywhere again. I couldn't imagine life without that doll. Through the years, the doll became less important in my life. I had other things to do, but the doll still sat on my bed during the day, and I still took it to bed at night. I gave that doll a lot of love when I was little. In fact, I loved that doll so much that she looks tattered and torn now. There are parts of her face and hands that are almost worn away. I had a lot of other toys when I was little, but none of them were ever so important as that doll. I don't play with toys anymore, but that doll is still in my room. She sits in a special chair in the corner. I'll always have that doll, no matter how worn out she is. I'll always keep her and cherish her as part of my early childhood. I am curious. I am curious about many things. I would like to find the answers to a lot of questions that I have. What holds the stars up in the sky? Why does ice form on the top of the lake when it is cold? Is there life on other planets? Why do we not fall off the face of the Earth? How do caterpillars turn into butterflies? All of these things are mysteries to me. There are so many questions that are unanswered. I think I should go to the library and get a book to find out why people grow old. What makes a television work? I also want to know where electricity comes from. Who is the strongest person in the world? Who is the smartest person in the world? Why do some people have blonde hair and some people have black hair? Why do people in different countries speak different languages? Why do people have to die? Why are no two snowflakes alike? What makes people fall in love? What makes the rivers run? Why does the sun rise every morning? How did the oceans form? Why did the dinosaurs vanish from the earth? I wonder if I'll ever find out the answers to all of my questions. I think I'll have to study hard and stay in school to find out everything that I want to know. Some questions never get answered. It is good to be curious. People who are curious about things are the ones who learn a lot, and some curious people go on to invent things and make important discoveries. Creative people. Some people are just born to create. That's what I think. Some people just have the need to write stories, compose beautiful music, or paint pictures. Creativity seems to be inside them, and they need to let it out. It's good that we have people like that. Composers like Mozart and Chopin have given us music that is incredibly beautiful. It's not just the classical composers who have given us great pieces of music. There are modern composers who have written great songs also. Elton John is an example of someone who has composed many wonderful songs. Andrew Lloyd Webber has given us some very popular musicals like Cats and The Phantom of the Opera. There are so many talented and creative people in this world. When you visit an art gallery, you marvel at how artists are able to recreate realism or make up something that seems totally unreal yet beautiful. 
the American artist Norman Rockwell painted some pictures that actually look like photographs. He tried to portray life as it was in America. Through his paintings, one can get a good sense of American life through the years. On the other hand, artists like Jackson Pollock did not portray realism. Jackson Pollock painted abstract pictures. His paintings are just as good as Norman Rockwell's, but they are entirely different. Some books that we read are classics. Mark Twain portrayed American life through his characters Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn. Charles Dickens brought Victorian England to life through his books. Most people are familiar with his Christmas Carol, where the mean and miserable Scrooge learns the true meaning of Christmas. People don't have to read the classics. There are modern writers who entertain readers through their stories. Stephen King has written a number of horror stories. Some of his books have even been made into movies. We are lucky to have creative people who share their gifts with us. If you are lucky enough to be creative, you should use your talents to create works of art that we can all share. If you are lucky enough to be creative, you should use your talents to create works of art that we all can share. Career Choices What do you want to be when you grow up? There are so many things that you can be. You might want to work in the field of law. You could be a police officer. You could be a judge or a lawyer. Maybe you'd like to work in the food industry. You could be a cook or a waitress. You might want to manage a hotel dining room. Perhaps you would want to do room service in a hotel. You could be a chef and make fancy meals for people. Maybe show business is what you'd like to be involved in. You could act in television shows or movies. You could sing or play an instrument in a band. If you like to help people, you could go into medicine. You could be a doctor or a nurse. You might be a surgeon and operate on people. There are other jobs in the field of medicine, too. You could be an x-ray technician or a lab technician. It takes a lot of education to be a doctor. Maybe you would rather be a teacher. You could teach in a primary school or a high school. If you don't want to work with children, you could become a professor at a university. There are hundreds of other jobs to choose from, too. You might want to fix cars or work in a store. You could be a dentist or a veterinarian. You could be a janitor or a zookeeper. There are so many jobs that I just can't name them all. Maybe you'd like to be a minister or an organist at a church. You could be a babysitter or a shop clerk. You might be interested in being an astronaut or a baker. You could work in a bank or at a shop. You could work on a construction crew and build roads and houses. Maybe you'd rather decorate the houses, so you could become an interior decorator. You could cut hair or be a driving instructor. The list is endless. There are even jobs that you may never have heard about. The choice is yours. You just choose whatever you want to be and do your best to become that. I could go on forever. You could work in a library. You could be a factory worker or a fisherman. You could make clothes or build bridges. You could wash windows or be a bricklayer. The possibilities are endless. I need glasses. I have been having trouble seeing the blackboard. Everything is blurry. I keep getting headaches. I told my mother about it, and she made an appointment with the optometrist. 
I went to a place where they made me read words and letters on a chart. Some of the words were big, and some were very small. I tried to read everything, but sometimes I couldn't see some of the small letters. The optometrist would cover one of my eyes while I read the chart. Then she would cover my other eye. She even put some drops in my eyes. I asked the optometrist if I had passed or failed the test. She laughed and said it wasn't that kind of test that you passed or failed. She was just trying to find out if I needed glasses. I did need glasses. My mother and I looked around. There were many pairs of frames. I wanted something that was in style. I tried on many pairs of frames. Some of them looked good on me, and some of them looked really funny on me. I finally chose a frame that was my favorite. I gave them to a lady who did some measurements. She told me to come back on Friday to get my glasses. On Friday, I got my glasses. My friends liked them. They said I looked smart in my glasses. I wore them to school on Monday, and I was able to see the blackboard clearly. I didn't realize how much I hadn't been able to see. Now I don't get headaches anymore. I'm glad that I have my glasses. Everything is a lot clearer now. I am clumsy. My mother says that I am clumsy. My father says that I am clumsy. I know that I am clumsy. I do things all the time that are clumsy. I fall down for no reason at all. If there is a crack in the sidewalk, I will be sure to trip on it and fall down. If I carry a plate of food in the cafeteria, I almost always either drop it or bump into someone with it. I don't try to do these things; it just happens. When I drink juice, I miss my mouth and get juice all over my shirt. I always have something spilled on my clothes. Last week, I opened a jar of peanut butter. The jar flew out of my hands and landed upside down on the floor. There was a big glob of peanut butter on the floor. Yesterday, I knocked over the sugar bowl. There was a big sticky mess on the floor. I bump my head when I get into the car. I rip my pants on things. I lose my money out of my pockets. I step on the cat's tail. I always feel bad when I do that because the cat thinks I don't love her. I don't mean to do these things. I am just a clumsy person. My parents tell me to slow down. I am always in a hurry. Maybe that's why I'm so clumsy. Maybe it's just the stage that I'm going through. If it is, I hope it is over soon. Being clumsy is no fun at all. Home alone. I remember the first time that my parents left me home alone. I was very grown up, and I thought that I would be just fine. I was fine for a while. I watched television and had something to eat. I called my friend on the phone, and we talked for a while. Then I sat down to read a book. The house was quiet, very quiet. I found myself listening very carefully. I heard a tap, tap, tapping noise. I wondered where it was coming from. It seemed to be coming from the window. I turned out the lights so that nobody would see me, and I peeked out the window carefully. I was expecting to see a robber tapping at my window. There was nobody there. It was just a tree branch swaying in the breeze and tapping at my window. I felt silly. I turned on the lights and sat back down to read my book. A few minutes later, I heard some creaking noises. I listened carefully. Then, I heard a clunking noise. I think it might have been the furnace. Then there was a whirring noise. My imagination began to play tricks on me. I was imagining that there were all kinds of creatures in the house. I told myself to grow up. I wouldn't let my imagination run away with me. I was glad when my parents got home. I told them about all the noises that I had heard. My parents laughed and said that 
all houses make noises. We're usually just so busy that we don't hear all the noises that go on. I have stayed home alone many times now. I just ignore all the little creaks and noises that I hear. I'm still alert and listen for anything suspicious, but I know that there are lots of noises that are harmless. That tree that taps on my window still frightens me sometimes, but I'm a lot braver now than I was the first time that I stayed home alone. My first job. My first real job was during my last year of high school. I had taken classes in various business subjects. In that last year of high school, we could do a co op. That meant we could work part of the time instead of going to school. It would count as a credit towards our diploma. The place I got a job was at a men's tailor shop. The owners were a very nice older German couple. They had two other men working for them, too. One of the men had had brain surgery for cancer. He had a big, long scar all around the top of his head. He told me all about it. He was always happy and full of fun. I thought he was very brave. The tailor shop made suits to order. One of the salesmen would measure the man, and the customer would choose a fabric and style, for he or his wife liked. The people in the back of the shop would then cut and sew the suit. The suits cost a lot of money. There were also suits already made that the customer could buy instead if they wished. They could also rent suits or tuxedos for weddings or parties. I worked at a little desk. I answered the phone, wrote letters, filed papers, and did some bookkeeping. It was about a mile walk from my school to work. I passed many clothing shops. That wasn't good because I spent a lot of my money that I earned in those shops. I worked at the tailor shop for almost a year. It was a good experience and helped me get my next job with the United States Navy. That was fun too. First trip away from home. Today I'm going to my friend's house. Her name is Valerie. This is going to be my first trip away from home without my parents. My dad is driving me to Valerie's house, and I'll be staying there for two weeks. Her mom will drive me back home. It takes about one and a half hours to get there. I have to pack enough clothes for play, work, and church. I hope I'll pack the right things. Of course, I have to remember my toothbrush and hairbrush. Valerie lives on a farm. I'll be helping her dad with milking the cows, I think. We'll play up in the hayloft after we have helped put the bales into the barn. We'll be all itchy when the job is done. There are a lot of things to do on a farm. Her mum is a good cook and will feed us well. There is a nice pond where we can go swimming. I mustn't forget my bathing suit. I wonder if the farm dog comes into the pond too. That would be funny. My dad and mum are giving me money just in case we go shopping. I hope we do go shopping because I want to buy lots of candy. I won't tell my mum that. Oh dear, I hear dad yelling, Let's go! I haven't even finished packing my things yet. I guess I better stop writing this now and get busy fast. Bye. My job. I work at a conservation park called Balls Falls. I've only worked there for three weeks now. I am a tour guide and I tell people the history of all the old buildings there. Somebody told me that one of the houses I work in is haunted. Now I get chills every time I walk into that house. My boss told me that the stories aren't real, but I have an active imagination. Balls Falls is very beautiful. It has two different waterfalls the upper falls and the lower falls. There used to be tons of water cascading over them, which turned a big water wheel to grind grain. 
However, through the years, the amount of water has really lessened. I love working at Balls Falls because I get to work outside a lot. I'm getting a tan. In July and August, I will be working with kids there at a day camp. I am getting ready now, making different crafts and thinking up fun new games to play. I can't wait to start working with them. I think that will be the best part of the summer. I will be going to work tomorrow. I usually have to work from 9 a.m. to 4:30 p.m. I also like the people I work with. They are very nice. Come to Balls Falls, and I'll give you a tour. Family. What does the word family mean to you? The easiest way to define family is to talk about who you are related to. Usually, there is a mom and a dad, and children who are brothers and sisters. This would be the core family. Then there is the extended family, which would include grandparents, aunts and uncles, cousins, nieces, and nephews and in-laws. People married to your brothers or sisters, husband or wife. However, I think the word family has a much deeper meaning. The word family brings words to my mind like love, support, help, kindness, fun, love, trips, closeness, love, forgiving, sharing, love, understanding, respect, and love. You'll notice one word that is repeated over and over again: love. I believe if a family has real love for one another, they will be able to overcome any problems they may have. Actually, they may not have too many problems if they all love and respect one another. However, there are things that cannot be helped, like death, sickness. Or accidents, it is during those hard times that a family's love helps them to go through those experiences. We had quite a few children in my family. There were brothers and sisters, which included an adopted brother, and a number of foster children too. I was also very fortunate that I had both my mom and dad to live with, and do things like vacations together. We had a lot of fun, and there were some times of tears too. Above all, we love one another. Family is a wonderful thing. I am so lucky. If I could fly, I sometimes imagine what it would be like if I could fly like a bird. Just imagine what it would be like to soar into the sky, flying high above the trees. You could stand on high rooftops and never be afraid of falling. You would see so many things as you flew over rooftops and forests. You would feel incredibly free as you traveled from place to place, not bothered by road signs or traffic jams. If I could fly like a bird, I would start from my backyard and travel through town. I would look down on the houses and factories. When I got tired, I would land in a field and take a nap. I would travel above rivers and follow them as they wound along and emptied into lakes and oceans. I would fly above parks and I would call out to the children as I flew high above them. I would dip and dive as I flew. I would soar up high and dive down low so that I could almost touch the treetops. Have you ever flown? I know that you can't fly like a bird, but you might have taken an airplane ride. When you're in an airplane, you pass through clouds. It is exciting to take an airplane ride. I love taking airplane flights. I like to look down at the earth. When you are up that high, everything below you looks tiny. That's the closest I'll get to flying like a bird. But I can still use my imagination and spread my wings and soar high above the world, just like a bird. I want to dye my hair green. Many of my friends have dyed their hair different colors. 
I don't mean normal hair colors like brown or black. My friends have dyed their hair orange, purple, and blue. I told my mother that I would like to dye my hair green. I explained to my mother that I would only use food coloring. The green would not last forever. My mother said that dyeing your hair was a silly fad. She said that I would not look good with green hair. I said that if I couldn't dye my hair green, maybe I could get a nose ring. My mother said no. I said that maybe a tattoo on my arm would be nice. My mother said, "No way." My mother said that she did some crazy things when she was a young girl. She said that she used to iron her hair to make it straight. That sounds quite boring to me. My friend Joan came over. Her hair is dyed bright pink. My father said, "Nice hair, Joan." I don't think that he really meant it. My mother says that when I am an adult, I can dye my hair whatever crazy color I like. But for now, she would like me to leave my hair its natural color. I tried to tell her that all my friends were doing it. My mother asked, "If all your friends were jumping off a cliff, would you do it too?" I said, "No. I think I'll have to wait to have green hair. But maybe by the time I'm old enough to dye my hair green, I won't want it that color." My mother says that fads change all the time. One day something might be popular, and the next day it's not in style at all. I'll just have to live without green hair for now. I wonder what the fad will be next month. If I was tiny, imagine what life would be like if you were two inches tall. You would have to be careful that nobody stepped on you. You would have to watch out for cats, dogs, and birds. It would be very dangerous, but just think of the things that you could do. You could live in a dollhouse or even a shoebox. You could use a bottle cap for a plate. You would have to wear dolls' clothes. A stamp would make a lovely picture to hang on your wall. You could hide in a mouse hole or a drawer. You wouldn't need much food. You could probably live comfortably on the crumbs that people would leave on the table. A thimble would make a good cup. If you went outside, the grass would seem like a jungle. An insect would be huge and frightening. A puddle would seem to be an ocean. You could cross the puddle in a paper cup and use a spoon for an oar. A matchbox would make a good bed with a handkerchief as a bedspread. You'd brush your hair with a toothbrush, but you'd never find anything small enough to brush your teeth with. You could take a ride on the back of a mouse. You wouldn't find any books that were small enough to read, but you might read the back of a pill bottle. You could ride in a toy car and have a soup bowl for a swimming pool. A leaf could be your umbrella, and a mitten would make a great sleeping bag. If you used your imagination, you could think up something to use for almost all your purposes. Being small might be fun, but then again, it would be frightening. I'd be afraid of my pet cat. I wouldn't want a book to fall on me. I would be afraid of being swept away by a big gust of wind. I think I'd rather be my size. If I were a giant, if I were a giant, I wouldn't be able to fit in my house. I'd have to live in a building that had a high ceiling, but I'd probably have a hard time getting through the door. I'd have to make my own clothes, but where would I get a giant needle and thread to sew with? I couldn't ride in a car or a plane. I suppose I would just have to take giant steps to get from place to place. I would have to be very careful not to step on anybody or anything. When I talked, people would cover their ears. My voice would sound very loud to them. I wouldn't find shoes to cover my feet. I wouldn't find a knife and fork to eat my dinner with. I might have to use a rake as a fork. My dinner would be huge. What would I cook my dinner in? I certainly wouldn't find an oven big enough to put my dinner in. If I sneezed, it would be like a hurricane. If I fell down, it would be like an earthquake. I wouldn't have any friends because everyone would be too tiny for me to talk to. I think that being a giant would be very lonely. 
I couldn't have just one apple. I would have to have a lot of apples to fill me up. I would have to drink gallons and gallons of water to quench my thirst. I could never relax under a tree. I would be taller than all the trees. I don't think that being a giant would be fun. I won't ever make a wish to be a giant. I would rather be my height. I'm very happy the way I am. Help. Did you ever have to call for help? Were you ever in a situation that was an emergency? It is good to know what to do in case of an emergency. You should always know how to get in touch with the police and fire departments. I have read stories where very young boys or girls have called the police and saved their friends or family members' lives because they knew just who to get a hold of. If you see a fire, you should call the fire department. A lot of tragedies have been prevented because the calls have been made quickly. It is important that emergency vehicles arrive very quickly. That is why those vehicles have sirens. When their sirens go, it means to get out of the way. Policemen, firemen, and ambulance attendants are trained to handle very difficult situations. They often save people's lives. They go through a lot of training to become good at what they do. They never panic in emergencies. For your part, you should keep emergency numbers near the phone, or know what the emergency numbers are. Where I live, there is a special number that you call for any emergency. We teach that number to everyone, even very tiny children. It is important to remain calm if you need help. If you call an emergency number, you have to be able to speak clearly. And tell the person you are talking to exactly what the problem is. I hope you are never in an emergency situation, but it is a good idea to be prepared. Learning to dance. I went to England with my mother. She used to be a singer in a band. We went to the hotel that she used to sing at. It was a big fancy hotel. Some of the people that she knew when she sang in the band were still there. They remembered my mother, and they had a good time talking to her and remembering old times. Many people told me that I looked like my mother. In the hotel, they had a fancy hall where they had ballroom dancing. I am not used to that kind of dancing. I always dance to rock music. A man told me that he would teach me how to dance. It looked very easy. I held one of his hands and put my other hand on his shoulder. He told me exactly how to move my feet. I was very clumsy and I stepped on his toes. He was patient with me, and he counted one, two, three. I tried to waltz with him. I would start out pretty well, but then I would get mixed up and stand on his toes again. The man laughed about it. I told him that I wasn't a very good dancer, but he said that I was good for a beginner. I think he was just being polite. The man asked my mother to dance. My mother is a very good dancer. I didn't know that about her. She never stepped on the man's toes once. The man thanked us for dancing with him, and I thanked him for giving me dancing lessons. I don't think I'll ever be very good at that type of dancing. Each generation has a specific type of dancing. The way that I dance is different from the way that my mother dances. The way that I dance doesn't involve moving your feet too much. 
I'm not too good at fancy steps. The birthday gift. It is going to be my father's birthday. What can I give him? I don't have much money. I have looked all through the stores, and I have not found anything that I think he would like or that I can afford. I have thought very hard about what to buy for him. I thought that he might like some candy, but my father really doesn't eat many sweets. I thought that he might like a new shirt, but he has lots of clothes. I can't afford a new car or computer for him. I was watching him on the weekend. He cut the grass, washed the car, took out the garbage, weeded the garden, and watered the plants. I got an idea. I went to my room and took out some paper. I cut out pieces of paper and I wrote on them. I wrote on one piece of paper that I would wash the car every weekend for the summer. I wrote on another piece that I would take out the garbage every week for the summer. I also wrote that I would cut the grass, weed the garden, and water the plants every week for the summer. I made a birthday card for my dad, and I put the pieces of paper inside it. I went downstairs and gave my gift to my dad. My dad thought that the gift was very thoughtful. He said that it was a gift from the heart. I did all those things for my dad all summer. He said that he had a lot of free time because I helped him so much. My dad and I are good friends. I don't mind doing things for him because I know that he is always there to help me out. A good gift doesn't have to be something that costs a lot. My dad says that the best gifts are the ones that show how much you care for the other person. I'm glad my dad liked his gift. What I look for in a friend. What is it that makes somebody your friend? Some people are nice, and you have fun with them. Some people are nice to talk to, but they don't become special to you. Some people become very close to you. Those people are the ones who become your good friends. Did you ever wonder why certain people do become your good friends? Friends usually have something in common. Often, friends enjoy doing the same things as each other. Maybe they like the same sports or the same music, or maybe they can even talk about problems or schoolwork. Friends usually find a common bond. Friends share ideas and listen to each other. Sometimes people who don't have similar interests even become friends. You can learn a lot from a person who likes different things than you. The most important thing about friends is that they must communicate with each other. A good friend is a person who takes the time to listen to the other person. One of the most important things that I think a friend should have is a sense of humor. I like to laugh with my friends. I like to feel comfortable around my friends. It is nice to be able to talk and laugh with people who have similar interests. It is nice to share things with people and learn about their interests. You become a better person if you are able to learn things from others. Life is a journey. On that journey, you meet many people. Some of those people will change your life. You have to choose your friends with care. A good friend is worth more than all the gold in the world. A good friend will make your journey through life more pleasant. Make friends along the way, and the path through life will be very rewarding. When you go to a restaurant, you might see a sign that says "Please wait to be seated." A host or hostess will ask you how many people are in your party. Then they will want to know if you want to sit in the smoking or non-smoking section. The host or hostess will take you to your seat. You might sit at a table or at a booth. The host or hostess will give you a menu to look at. Sometimes there are different menus for different meals. There can be a breakfast menu, a lunch menu, and a dinner menu. Sometimes there is also a wine list and a dessert menu. The food and the prices of the food are listed on the menu. On your table, there will be cutlery. Cutlery is the knives, forks, and spoons. There will also be a napkin. You are supposed to put your napkin on your lap when you eat. Your waiter or waitress will take your order. You might want an appetizer before your meal. 
Some people want a salad or soup before their meal. After your meal, you might have a dessert or tea or coffee. When it is time to go, you will pay your bill and leave a tip for the waiter or waitress. Music. If you were in an orchestra, what would you play? Would you play a tuba, a trumpet, or a saxophone? Perhaps you would prefer a stringed instrument like a violin or a cello. Maybe you would enjoy percussion more. You could play the kettle drum. There are instruments that have keyboards. A piano and an organ have keyboards. There are instruments that have strings on them. A guitar, banjo, and mandolin have strings on them. There are instruments that you blow into. A flute, a French horn, and a harmonica are all instruments that you blow into. There are instruments that you hit with a stick. A drum and a cymbal are two things that you would hit with a stick. If you are in an orchestra, you have to watch the conductor. He will lead you through the piece of music. You might just want to be in a band for fun. You could join a rock band or a dance band. Some people learn to read music. Music notes are written on a staff. Each note represents a sound. There are whole notes, half notes, quarter notes, and eighth notes. Each one of these is held for a different number of beats. It is good to learn about music. You have to learn your scales and learn about sharps and flats. If you want to learn how to play an instrument, it is best to take music lessons. Who, what, where, and why? These are important words. They are all words that begin questions. Who is about a person? Who is the girl with the blue dress on? Who stole my watch? Who will come with me to the game? Who is driving us to the party? What is about a thing? What is that big thing on the sidewalk? What should I do when I get to your house? What kind of clothes should I wear to the party? What shall I buy you for your birthday? Where is about a place? Where are you going for your vacation? Where did I leave my glasses? Where did my brother go? Where on earth is Timmins? Why is the word that asks for an explanation? Why did you take the last piece of pie? Why is the world round? Why should I give you any money? Why did the chicken cross the street? They say that you should answer all of these questions if you are writing a good story. You have to give the who, what, where, and why to write a good story. Which direction? Which direction should I go in? Should I go up? If I go up, I will head toward the sky. I can go up the stairs. Should I go down? I can go down the stairs to the basement. I can climb down into a hole. Should I go left or right? I am right-handed, so I know which way right is. Should I go backwards? I would be going away from the things that I am facing now if I went backwards. If I went backwards from the thing that I am facing, I would go away from it. Should I go forward? I will just go straight ahead if I go forward. If I am facing something and I go forward, then I will go toward the thing that I am facing. Maybe I should go sideways, but which side, left or right? It sounds very complicated, but it is not. Directions are very easy to follow if you just stop and think about them. Traffic. Traffic moves along on the streets and highways. There are rules that drivers must follow to make the traffic flow smoothly. You must wear a seatbelt. The seatbelt helps to keep you safe. You must stop at all stop signs. You must also stop at a red light. A green light means go, and a yellow light means to be careful. If you see a sign that says school crossing, you have to be careful because you are near a school and children might be crossing the street. Some places are crosswalks. Those are places where people cross the street. People who are walking have the right of way. If you hear a siren behind you, you must pull over. 
An emergency vehicle like a police car or an ambulance might need to get somewhere fast. When a school bus puts on its flashing signals, you have to stop. You can't go past the school bus because children may be crossing the street from the bus. You should always obey the speed limit. It is not good to drive too fast. People should never drink and drive. Driving is a serious business. You have to obey all the rules to be a good driver. The office. Some people work in an office. There are special tools that people in an office need to do their work. There is a computer in the office. There is a telephone. Most of the time, the secretary answers the telephone. The secretary sits at a desk. The secretary has pens and pencils on the desk. The secretary writes on a notepad. Some other things that you would find in an office would include the following: a stapler to staple pages together, a photocopier to copy pages, a pencil sharpener to sharpen pencils. A water cooler where the employees could get a drink of water, a hole punch to make holes in sheets of paper, and liquid paper which is used to blank out errors on a page. Some offices have many employees in them. All of the employees have their own desks. Other offices just have one person at a desk. In some offices, there is a secretary or a receptionist, and then there is the boss in another room. There are often many important papers in an office. Important papers can be called documents. You might have to sign a document or fill out a form in an office. Some offices have bookshelves filled with books. The books are filled with information that the people in the office need. You will have to visit an office sometime. Maybe it will be a doctor's office or a lawyer's office. There are many different types of offices. The farm. My uncle is a farmer. He lives on a farm. He has many different types of animals. In the barn, there are horses and cows. The cows swish the flies away from themselves with their tails. It sounds very loud if a cow says "moo" when you are standing there. The cows eat the grass from my uncle's field. He gets milk from the cows. I put a saddle on one of the horses and went for a ride. There are pigs in the pig pen. He has goats. He says that the goats will eat just about anything. He has a chicken coop with chickens in it. The chickens lay eggs. Have you ever seen baby chicks? They are very cute. My uncle collects the eggs every morning. There is a rooster too. The rooster crows when the sun comes up. My uncle also has a goose. The goose makes a honking noise. I don't think that the goose likes me. It nips me when I go near it. Many cats live in my uncle's barn. They are stray cats, but he lets them stay there because they keep the mice away. My uncle feeds the cats. My uncle says that he would like to get some sheep for his farm. You can get wool from sheep. There are a lot of animals on my uncle's farm. Transportation. Every family that I know has at least one car. Some families have two or even three cars. Most people get their license to drive when they are sixteen. In my house, we just have one car. If my father takes the car to work, my mother will take the bus. I ride in a school bus to school. My sister works in another town. She gets on the train to go to work. The train station is not far from my house. 
The train tracks run right by my house. My grandfather from Ireland comes to visit us. He came over by boat. He had to cross the ocean. We went to Florida last year. We flew on a plane. The plane flew right through the clouds. My friend's brother drives a motorcycle. He wears a helmet. I rode on his motorcycle once. I had to sit on the back and hold on tight. I ride my bicycle when the weather is nice. I also have a scooter that I use to travel around. I took a helicopter ride once. The helicopter's propellers were going around when I got on. I went straight up in the air. I enjoyed the ride. I would like to learn how to fly a plane or a helicopter. I like flying through the air. Jobs. There are many different jobs that you can choose from. You can be a doctor or a nurse. You could work in a hospital or doctor's office. You might be a firefighter and put out fires. A policeman enforces the law. An actor plays roles on stage or in the movies. You could drive a taxi or be the pilot of an airplane. What kinds of things do you like to do? You might want to be a sales clerk in a store. Maybe you are good at a sport. You could be a baseball player or a hockey player. Being a dentist is a good job. A dentist fixes teeth. If you are good at arguing, you might want to be a lawyer. Do you like to fix people's hair? You could be a hairdresser or a barber. If you are good with your hands, you might want to be a carpenter or a mechanic. If you like to travel, you could be a stewardess or a travel agent. You could be a teacher or a photographer. Are you artistic or creative? You might want to be an artist or a writer. You could work on construction and build houses. You could look after animals and be a veterinarian. If you like to cook, you could be a cook or a chef. There are so many places to work and so many jobs to do. Maybe you could fix computers or work in a library. You could wash windows or be the captain of a ship. There is no limit to what you can be. Colors. Red is a vibrant color. Roses are sometimes red. Blood is red. White is the color of snow. Clouds are very often white. Blue is the color of the sky and the ocean. Black isn't really a color at all. Tar is black. A crow is black. Green is the color of grass. It is also the color of leaves on the trees in the summer. Brown is the color of dirt. Many people have brown hair. Yellow is a bright color. Most people use yellow when they draw a picture of the sun. Orange is an easy color to remember. That is because an orange is orange. Pink is the color that we dress baby girls in. We dress baby boys in blue. Purple is the color of some violets. The Canadian flag is red and white. What color is your flag? Months. There are twelve months in the year. January is the first month of the year. It is usually cold in January. February is the second month of the year. 
it is still winter when February comes. They say that March comes in like a lion and goes out like a lamb. That means that it is still usually cold and sometimes stormy when March begins. By the time that March ends, the weather is starting to get a little better. April is the rainy month. April showers bring May flowers. Many of the spring flowers bloom in May. The weather can be quite mild in May. June is usually a nice warm month. Many people get married in June. July can be hot. People have vacations in July. It is a month to do summer things. It is still summer in August, but the summer is winding down. August is the time to have last minute vacations. In September, we go back to school. The autumn winds begin to blow. October really feels like autumn. October is Halloween time. November is when we really start to feel the chill. December is the Christmas month. Most people do a lot of Christmas shopping in December. They spend quite a bit of time getting ready for Christmas. All of the months are different. Which month were you born in? Days of the week. There are seven days of the week. Sunday is a day of rest for some people, but many people still have to work. Quite a few people go to church on a Sunday. On Monday morning, we go back to school after the weekend. Many people say they don't like Monday because it is the beginning of the work week. Tuesday is a school day and a working day. I don't think that there is anything special about a Tuesday. Wednesday is the middle of the work week. On Thursday, many of the stores and malls stay open later. It gives you a chance to run some errands on a Thursday night. On Friday, you feel like the work week is nearly over. Some people say, "Thank goodness it is Friday." They look forward to the weekend. On Saturday, many people can sleep in late. People get errands done on Saturday. You see a lot of people in the grocery store on a Saturday. Most children look forward to Saturday so that they can play with their friends. Then Sunday comes again. The weeks turn into months, and the months turn into years. Time goes by quite quickly. Fruit. Some fruit grows on trees. Apples grow on trees. You can get red, yellow, or green apples. Some apples are green until they ripen. Then. They turn red. Peaches grow on trees. Peaches have a fuzzy skin. Cherries grow on trees. You can climb a ladder and pick cherries from the tree. Cherries and peaches have pits inside them. The pits are not edible. Pears also grow on trees. Lemons grow on trees. They are very sour. Have you ever picked strawberries? Strawberries do not grow on trees. You have to bend down to pick strawberries. Have you ever tried strawberry shortcake? It is very good. Grapes grow on vines. People use grapes to make wine. There are many types of berries. There are blackberries, blueberries, raspberries, and cranberries, just to name a few. Some fruits are more exotic. There are mangoes and papayas. They don't grow in Canada. Bananas and oranges don't grow in a Canadian climate either, but we are able to buy them here. Some fruits have to be peeled, and some can be eaten as they are. It is always a good idea to wash fruit before you eat it. The farmers spray the crops with pesticides to kill bugs, so it is good to wash that off. Bugs. Many people are afraid of bugs. Some bugs do bad things, like eating crops or clothes. Some bugs, such as termites, even eat wood. Other bugs can be good. Spiders catch flies. Flies are not good because they carry germs. Insects get caught in the web that the spider builds. 
Ants get into homes and eat food. Bees are good because honey comes from bees. It is not good if you get stung by a bee. A caterpillar turns into a butterfly. Butterflies can be very beautiful. You can find grasshoppers outside on a sunny day. Grasshoppers hop through the grass. Crickets make a noise by rubbing their legs together. Dragonflies usually live near water. They have large, colorful wings. Ladybugs are red with little black dots. There are many types of beetles. Nobody wants to have cockroaches in their house. Centipedes have many legs. Fleas get onto your pets and bite them. They make your dog or cat itchy. Mosquitoes can make you itchy when they bite you. Have you ever had a mosquito bite? Money. I keep my money in the bank. I have saved up my money. I saved all my pennies in a jar. A penny is only worth one cent. I have nickels. A nickel is worth five cents. A dime is worth ten cents. A quarter is worth twenty-five cents. A quarter is a quarter of a dollar. Four quarters make up a dollar. A dollar is worth one hundred cents. I saved up all of my dollars. Our dollars used to be paper, but now they are coins. We call our dollars loonies. It's a funny name. We also have two dollar coins. We call those toonies. We have five dollar bills and ten dollar bills. If you are lucky, you will have twenty dollar bills, fifty dollar bills, and even hundred dollar bills. Our bills in Canada are different colors. That makes them easy to recognize if you go somewhere to spend them. It is wise to save your money. If you save enough, you could have hundreds or thousands of dollars. Manners. It is good to be polite. People like you more when you are polite. Always say please and thank you. If you ask for some milk, you should say, "Please, may I have a glass of milk?" When someone gives you the milk, you should respond with, "Thank you." It is not difficult to be polite. You should not push or shove people. You should cover your mouth when you cough or sneeze. You should address people properly. If you are trying to get someone's attention, you would say, "Excuse me." You wouldn't say, "Hey, you." There are table manners. That is where you eat properly and politely at the dinner table. You don't shove food into your mouth. You don't reach over other people's plates. You don't talk with your mouth full. All of these things are common sense. Being polite is mostly thinking about how you would like to be treated. You wouldn't want people to be impolite to you. It is not polite to point at people. It is not polite to burp out loud. It is not polite to use someone else's things without asking first. Being polite just comes naturally if you have been brought up in a home where everyone was polite. The two sexes. There are two sexes or genders. There is the male gender and there is the female gender. Males and females are different, both physically and mentally. Humans are both male and female. And animals are both male and female. If you have a dog, it is either a girl dog or a boy dog. Boys grow up to be men. Men grow hair on their faces. Men are usually more muscular than women. Men dress differently than women. Men are males. Males are masculine. Girls grow up to be women. Only women can have babies. Women are females. Females are feminine. Another word for women is ladies. It is good that we have males and females. Your father is a male. Your grandfather, brother, and uncle are males. Your mother is a female. Your grandmother, sister, and aunt are females. Me. I am special. Nobody in the world is exactly like I am. They might have the same hair color and eyes that I do, but they are not exactly like me. I am the only person in the world who thinks my thoughts. No two people in the world are exactly alike. It is good to be your own person. It is good to be creative, and be natural. People have to follow the laws and the rules. People should always be kind to others. I try to follow all the rules. 
I am kind to others. I am a lot like many other people, yet I am different. I am like my friend Jane, but she has red hair, and I have dark hair. She has a loud voice, and I have a soft voice. She likes to eat vegetables, and I do not. Jane and I are the same height. We both like movies, and we are both afraid of spiders. We wear the same size shoes, and we both have the same favorite color. We are best friends, but sometimes we disagree about things. We are alike in many ways, and different in many ways. If we were all exactly the same, the world would be a very boring place. I am myself, and I am glad that I am special. You are special too. Use your own special talents and take the time to meet other people. The world is made up of a lot of different people, and that's what makes life exciting. My cat. I got my cat when she was just a tiny kitten. I named her Puff because her fur is soft and fluffy. She has white fur, but her tail, paws, and ears are black. She has a little pink nose. And yellow eyes, she says meow whenever she wants a bowl of milk. I feed her cat food and treats. She washes her face with her paw when she is finished eating. My whole family loves her, and we can tell that she loves us. She loves to curl up in our laps. She purrs whenever we pet her. She is very playful. We sometimes roll up a piece of paper and throw it to her. She loves to chase the paper and hit it with her paws. She also chases bugs. Last night she chased a spider, but she was afraid to touch it. At night she curls up in my bed with me. She likes to be warm. I have given her a blanket of her own, but when I put her on it, her tail twitches. Her tail twitches whenever she's upset or angry. I know she doesn't want to be on her blanket. She wants to be in my bed. I let her into my bed, and she falls asleep, purring loudly. Music. My family is very musical. My father plays the guitar. He plays in a band. The band plays country music. My mother is a singer in the band. She also plays the piano. I took the flute in music class at school. I play the flute in the school band. I also sing in the school choir. I have a low voice. My sister has a high voice. She is a soprano. At home, I like to practice the drums. But my mother says that it's too loud. Sometimes I play so loudly that I break a drumstick. I practice whenever she goes out. I would like to be in a rock band. Some of my friends and I are thinking of starting our own rock band. My sister is a very good piano player. She has won many awards at music festivals. She likes to play classical music. But sometimes I get her to play rock music with me. She is also a very good singer. I like to sing with her. We sing in harmony. I listen to music all the time on the radio. I know a lot of songs. I can sing along with most of the songs that come on the radio. I memorize the lyrics of the songs. My sister and I sometimes get together and sing our favorite songs. Maybe someday we will start our own rock band, and I will be the drummer. Pets. There are many different animals that you can have for pets. The most common pets are cats and dogs. I think the second most common pets are birds and fish. You can hug a cat or a dog. You can play with a cat or a dog, but it is difficult to play with a bird or a fish.
Some birds are very smart, and they can be taught to do things. Parrots are very clever. Some of them even talk. Birds usually stay in bird cages. Fish have to stay in the water in a tank or a fishbowl. Some people have gerbils or guinea pigs as pets. There are even people who have ferrets as pets. I have a friend who has a lizard for a pet. She has to buy live crickets for her lizard to eat. Another friend of mine has a pet snake. I don't think I would like to have a pet snake. There are different types of dogs. Some dogs are very big, and some are small. A Labrador Retriever is a big dog. A poodle is usually a small dog, although there are some large poodles. Some dogs are noisy and they bark a lot. Other dogs are quiet and obedient. I once had a dog. It was a cocker spaniel. I used to take it for walks. There are different types of cats too. My favorite type of cat is a Siamese cat. Siamese cats have blue eyes. My mother had a Persian cat. It was very furry. My mother said that it used to shed fur all over the house. Pets are a lot of fun, but they are a lot of work too. To be a good pet owner, you have to be very responsible. Parties. Parties can be a lot of fun. People get invited to parties. You can have a party because it is a special occasion, or just because you want to have a party. Sometimes people wear paper hats at parties. These are called party hats. Some people decorate with streamers and balloons. At some parties, there is a cake. Sometimes there are just snacks and drinks. At some parties, people play games. There are also parties where people just stand around and talk. People wear different things to parties. You can go to some parties in casual clothes. At other parties, you need to be dressed up in good clothes. There are other parties where you are supposed to wear a costume. There are many different kinds of parties. There are Christmas parties. Birthday parties, going away parties, and parties for no reason at all. I have been to parties for people who are retiring, or for people who have just had a new baby. There are hundreds of reasons for having a party. At some parties, you take a gift. If it is a birthday party, then you take a gift and a birthday card to the person who is having the birthday. Sometimes. People will ask you to bring food or drinks to the party. All parties are different. It is nice to be invited to parties. Grocery shopping. What do you see when you go to the grocery store? The aisles are filled with food. There are also refrigerators and freezers filled with food. There are sometimes things in bins in the middle of the aisles. There are different departments in the grocery store. There is the bakery. In the bakery, there are sweet things such as cakes, pies, cookies, and tarts. There are also things that you would eat with your dinner, like bread and buns. There are other things in the bakery department, like bagels and biscuits. The baker works in the bakery. There is the canned goods section. This is where you might find sauces and soups. Vegetables and fruits also come in cans. There is the section for dairy products. Here you would find milk and cream. The dairy section would also have cheese and butter. Yogurt is also found in the dairy section. In the meat department, there is beef and pork. Poultry is also found in the meat department. Poultry is chicken, duck, and goose. There are also cold cuts in the meat department. Cold cuts are the meats that are sliced up for sandwiches. Some examples of cold cuts are ham and bologna. The butcher works in the meat department. The produce department is full of fruits and vegetables. 
clerks spray water on the fruits and vegetables to keep them fresh. There is a section in the grocery store for personal hygiene. This is where you would find shampoo and toothpaste. Soap and skin products would also be in this section. There is even a section for your pets. You can buy cat food and dog food. There are toys for cats and dogs. Differences. Are you tall or short? Are you big or small? People come in many different shapes and sizes. Some people wear size small clothes. Other people wear size medium clothes. There are people who wear large size clothes. Some people even wear extra large clothes. Some people are thin. Some people are fat. Some people are in between. There are people with short hair. Other people have long hair. Some people have no hair at all. No two people are exactly alike. Some people have long legs. I have short legs. I don't walk as fast as a person with long legs. I am not a tall person. In fact, I am quite short. My feet are a size seven. My mother has size five feet. My father has size twelve feet. We are all different sizes. It is not a bad thing. It is a good thing that we are all unique.